And joining us now here on Locked On Buckeyes, it is Jacob Rude, the host of Locked On Hoosiers. Big game tonight. The Buckeyes take a trip to Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana for a big, big matchup. Jacob, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I am uh, I'm enjoying watching IU basketball this season. It has not been fun uh, for many of the last few years, but it has been a lot of fun this season. Yes, it's been fun. A whole I'm sure it's been a whole lot more enjoyable than the football season was for you. Uh, let's less said about that <laughs> season. The best last time I came on here, uh, right after the podcast, Ohio State just decimated and ended Indiana's football season, and we we fully switched to basketball after that. <laughs> good deal, good deal. Big game tonight, Indiana basketball. What's been the story of their basketball season so far? Yes, uh, just kind of the surprise nature of of how competitive they've been. Uh, they obviously in the off season, pretty much right after the season, fired Archie Miller, and the hiring they made of Mike Woodson um, shocked everybody. There wasn't really anybody that expected that a uh, a lifetime NBA coach. I mean, he's an IU alum, but a lifetime mm -hmm. NBA coach coming back to the college game. Uh, the transition was made a little easier with a familiar name. Thad Mata is working in the. Um, kind of athletic office as a he's just kind of focused on the basketball program coach Woodson has said that he talks to him daily and kind of gets guidance on how to do things in the college game uh, from him but the way he has hit the ground running and the way he's turned around a program that really had no identity no direction when Archie Miller left has been uh, I think by far the biggest storyline because right now he has IU competing at a level they haven't in a couple seasons. Has IU missed any games this year due to COVID? They have once. Uh, it was a non-conference game right before the new year. They played right before Christmas. They had a game against UNC Asheville scheduled on the 29th. Uh, UNC Asheville had a uh, COVID breakout. And so they missed that, but they played against Penn State. Lost, unfortunately, on Sunday. But... Knock on wood, so far so good, because I know a lot of other programs have had it much worse. This is true. That game Sunday against Penn State, what was the deciding factor as far as why Indiana was on the losing side in that game? Yeah, so the kind of identity of this Indiana team is they're one of the best defenses in the nation uh, and certainly one of the best defenses in the Big Ten, uh, but they are really bad offensively right now. Uh, they started the season playing some softer opponents. Offense wasn't great, but wasn't much of a problem. But as the competition level has ticked up uh, in non-conference play and then into the Big Ten, the offense has become a lot more of a problem. Uh, and that was, I think, the big thing in that contest is just uh, guard play has really determined how whether the Hoosiers have success or not this season. And... Uh, defensively, they still, I mean, they held Penn State to 61 points. You're going to win a lot of games if you hold a team to that low scoring, but the offense just can't really keep up right now. And it's it's hot and cold with this offense. Uh, some nights they play well. They scored 112, albeit in double overtime against Syracuse, but then they scored 58 against Penn State on Sunday. In the offseason, you mentioned Mike Woodson, first-year head coach, um, NBA lifetimer, I, IU alum, he is now back coaching. And I remember in the offseason talking about or hearing rumblings about Trace Jackson Davis, why he decided to stay in Indiana. And I believe he said it was either him or his parents said it didn't take him very long after talking to Mike Woodson for him to decide to stay there in Bloomington. How do you think him staying in school has helped his game grow? Yeah, he has become leaps and bounds better defensively. Uh, that has been the big focus for Mike Woodson since he took over is to uh, establish a defensive identity. Mm -hmm. And Trace Jackson Davis has fully bought in. He is one of the best rim protectors, again, in the conference. Um, he has committed to that side of the ball. And th just the level of buy-in you get from the rest of the team when you're All-American is committed on that end, uh, really spreads throughout. So... Uh, that is by far, I think, the biggest thing is just what he's 
been able to do defensively and grow on that side of the ball. Um, and then he just continues to to be outstanding offensively. Uh, there are only a, a few handful of guys, I think, that are better um, post players in the country than Trace Jackson Davis. And uh, he is great at scoring out of them, finding open players if you double. Uh, just really a, a great threat for the Hoosiers to have. EJ Liddell is a player that many big top, let's say big national college basketball analysts are saying he is in the running for national player of the year. Not so much all American, not an exclusive group, but an even more exclusive group, which is the player of the year group, which only goes to one player every single year. Race Thompson, Trace Jackson Davis, two big men, two guys that are phenomenal down low. I think we may see them trade off on who guards EJ Liddell at time. But how do you think defensively they can give EJ Liddell fits? Well, IU ranks, um, according to Ken Palm, IU ranks number one in the nation in defensive two-point percentage. And that is because Race Thompson and Trace Jackson Davis both are superb defenders. They're 19th in block percentage. A lot of that is Trace, but Race Thompson is kind of the glue guy that does everything for the Hoosiers and... Uh, but both of them are really stellar on that side of the ball. Um, Trace is a bit more of a kind of the rim protector, gets the blocks, that type. Race Thompson's a little more athletic, um, can go out to the perimeter and guard guys and stick in front of you like that. They, I mean, both of them are supremely athletic. Um, it's just Trace is a little bit more of a shot blocker than Race is. But yeah, I would expect both of them to take turns on EJ Liddell. There aren't, there's hardly any time where at least one of them isn't on the floor. Uh, and I would imagine that'll be the case on uh, Thursday. And certainly one of them is going to be on the floor when EJ Liddell is. So I would say the two of them will get the lion's share of the minutes. I would say probably race will start out on them. But I think we'll see a fair amount of Trace versus EJ Liddell kind of matchups throughout the night. You're tapped into Locked On Buckeyes here on a Thursday part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every single day. We're joined by, well, we're here with Jacob Rude, the host of Locked On Hoosiers, getting us ready for the big game tonight, Indiana versus Ohio State. Who are some other players that Ohio, that Ohio State, Indiana currently has that Buckeye fans should keep their eye, eye out for? Well, like I said, the guard play has been hot and cold this season. Um, Xavier Johnson is going is the point guard. He's going to have the ball a lot. When he plays well, the Hoosiers play well. Uh, he is a, a super athletic uh, point guard, um, pretty pretty strong defensively. You're going to be able to tell who he is because he has one of the funkiest jump shots <laughs> I've ever seen. And I, I covered Lonzo Ball and LaMelo Ball for mm. many years. And I'm telling you, this is one of the funkiest jump shots <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, he takes a handful of threes a game, so you will see it. Uh, he's going to, but he has the ball quite a bit, um, for better or worse, sometimes for the Hoosiers. Uh, but he's someone that can really impact the game. He's super athletic, super quick, can get to the rim. What happens when he gets there is sometimes uh, up for uh, question, but he's a big one. The other one, I think, uh, maybe the other two, Parker Stewart is mm -hmm. one of the top three-point shooters in the country. Uh, he's attempting four and a half threes a game and making 47.5% of them. Uh, that's actually come down just a little bit uh, after the Notre Dame game. I believe he was right at 50%. Um, so he's regressing a little bit, but he will absolutely punish you uh, if you double trace in the post. Uh, they'll swing it around to him, and he gets a lot of open looks like that. And then the other one is a, a name Big Ten fans are probably fam familiar with. Miller Cop transferred from Northwestern to IU. Uh, he's the fifth starter. Another guy who can stretch the floor, uh, knock it down from three. He's actually – improved is just kind of a general score. Uh, we'll get into the mid-range, has a little bit of a floater as well this season. So uh, it's really, there, there's kind of two levels to this team. It's Trace and Race, and they are everything for this IU team. And then it's really what guards can produce the rest of the way that will carry them. Tamar Bates is a freshman who, again, another kind of hot and cold type of guy that uh, he was a five-star recruit. 
you can see the potential of him being a an elite scorer, but it comes and goes in waves. So uh, there's a whole mix of guards that it's just kind of a get anybody's guess who's going to play well that night and um, who's going to see the most minutes out of that group. Miller Cobb was actually where I was going to go next. I remember last year when Ohio State played Northwestern, and this was my first, you know, my first season covering the bad the Buckeye basketball team, and so. I, I'm falling in love with a lot of what I'm seeing, a lot of players. Dwayne Washington Jr. has got a lot going on. But I remember that Northwestern game very, very well because Miller Cop seemed like it, he made it look so easy at times. And I I wonder if this is kind of a game where he might have a bigger game than he's had all year because he knows what, Ohio, what, what he did to Ohio State last year. He's like, oh, I had success against them last year, Jacob. Maybe he'll do the same thing tonight in Assembly Hall. You would think uh, he's struggled a bit in Big Ten play so far. Um, he he's he provides spacing, and there's a familiarity with the Big Ten in general that he's going to have that very few other guys on this roster have. This is a roster is full of a lot of guys that transferred in. Xavier Johnson, Parker Stewart. I mean, even Miller Cop transferred mm-hmm. into the program. Uh, so it's a lot of kind of new faces, unfamiliar with it, but. Um, yeah, certainly this is kind of where I thought Miller Cop would have his most value is once we got to Big Ten play and just the familiarity he has with programs, with other players, with how teams play, things of that nature. Uh, it's going to take a, quite a bit to, for him to have his best game of the season because he did score 28 points in that Syracuse game. Uh, he played almost – he played 48 minutes. Uh, but he he's had moments – uh, throughout the season where, like you said, it looks almost effortless, his jump mm-hmm. shot. And uh, when he has it going, he's been a really big weapon for the Hoosiers, him and Parker Stewart both. Um, it it really – the IU offense is really clicking when those two are, are able to get shots up. And um, it's just that hasn't really yet been the case. The first half against Wisconsin, IU looked incredible. And about every <laughs> everything since then uh, in Big, T- Big Ten play has been uh, a struggle, to say the least. Last but not least, I, ha- I always ask people, I try my best, to hit on one Indiana player that played high school basketball in the state of Indiana, Rob Finnessy. I don't know what happened to him. I know he's a senior. I thought he was a junior, but looking up, the, up his, his stats, now he's a senior. Numbers don't look hot. Came with a lot of promise really kind of fizzled out. What's been the story of him this year? Could he have a breakout game tonight? It's interesting you mentioned him because I almost mentioned him and the other players uh, to watch out for. Yeah, he came in to the program uh, as a, a highly touted recruit. Uh, honestly, he he kind of peaked in the that Crossroads Classic against Butler. He had basically a half-court buzzer beater to win the game. Yeah, yeah. And he... Injuries have, have really hampered him throughout the years and really held him back. And that was the case early this season. He missed a handful of games with injury. But uh, he's actually had his two best games back-to-back okay. uh, in quite some time, in, in multiple seasons, I think, uh, against Northern Kentucky right before Christmas, against the Penn State game, or against Penn State, I should say, uh, defensively, uh, no matter what the, I mean, the stats have kind of waned. Defensively, he is a really, really good guard. Yeah. Um, and he's probably going to take the top kind of perimeter assignment. He doesn't start, but he's the first guy off the bench. He plays starter minutes. He closed that game against Penn State. Uh, so even then, um, yeah, he he just, he hasn't lived up to the hype, but he is playing better this season. Um, and He's an interesting one because after that Notre Dame game, uh, it, that's when it was kind of revealed that he'd been bat- battling injuries all year and he was finally healthy again. And that coincides with uh, after that game where his two best games of the season. So he's trending in the right direction. It'll be interesting to see uh, if he is able to continue doing that uh, because he could be a really big piece to this team. I, I Again, I keep saying it, guard play is – going to determine so much for the Hoosiers. And if they can get a guy like Rob Fennessy going, uh, that could really change the trajectory of this team. 
Jacob, my man, this has been fun. If you could let everyone know, they could follow you on Twitter in case they want to follow you along throughout the game. Yeah, uh, you can follow me. It's really simple, just at Jacob Rude. Uh, you can follow Locked on Hoosiers at, at LO underscore Hoosiers. And uh, I usually live tweet the IU games more from the Locked on Hoosiers account. But yeah, if you guys want to follow along and, and get kind of our input, our take on some of the things, feel free to. And guys, you can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. That's it for today's show. Be sure to check out the game. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'm excited to watch it. I'm sure Jacob is excited to watch it. The Buckeyes, they're, they look good. Malachi Brandon just had 35 points. Curious to see if he backs that up with another dominant performance today in Assembly Hall.